So today is a pretty chilly day today. <laughs> it's pretty windy, but the trees are changing color. You see those hills back there? I don't know. I love this time of year. So we're going to go into the greenhouse and check out our plants. And right now it's pretty warm in here. Right here, it shows it's around 60. So that's pretty good. Outside is probably in the 40s. Now we'll leave our window uh, closed because it's still too uh, chilly right now and the sun hasn't came out. So I don't want to open that up quite yet. But I want to show you some. Look at these radishes, guys. They have gotten so big. I do need to come in here and uh, kind of thin them out. Uh, possibly not too much, but just a little bit. Especially these. These are our carrots. And I'm still trying to germinate these and uh, they're coming up slowly but surely. Those are our beets. We have a few onions coming up. Kurabi. Only uh, one or two of these have germinated. These are leeks. And back here, these are chives but nothing yet. Our spinach. Red, uh, the romaine red. Now these right here, they, uh, they are starting to come up. These are taking a little bit longer This isn't dead, but it's almost there. I don't know what is going on with this, but our other stuff is looking pretty good. So last night we finally got some rain, uh, well needed rain. We haven't had rain for probably about, I don't know, five, six weeks. And uh, it was pretty dry around here. Um, we were expected to get around uh, two inches of rain, but I don't think we got quite that much. So we didn't get much rain in our rain barrels. We probably got around, maybe around 100 gallons and that's it. I think we only got maybe a quarter of an inch of rain, possibly. Uh, it wasn't as much as we were hoping. But that's okay. We have our natural spring, so that will help us out in the dry season. So our rabbits are doing good. Um, we're gonna check, they still got plenty of water. So we're going to feed them or check their food. He has plenty of food. She has plenty of food. And these three, I need to add some food to theirs. And we're also gonna give them some hay. She didn't eat all of hers, so I'm going to clean this out So, because she probably didn't like this. And I'm going to give her some fresh ones. So on the other one, she picked out everything that she liked and 
I gave her some fresh one and she's super excited. Look at these three. They're like, where's mine? They are growing so fast. We've done our morning chores. I've already fed the chickens. Um, we had uh, two guineas left. We decided to put those outside. They were fully feathered, but not quite big enough uh, to let go. Um, but the cage that I had them in, they were able to get out and they went straight into the chicken coop, which is okay. I could hear them singing this morning and I guess they're happy. Hopefully they'll stay in there until they learn their still pretty small um not big enough to let out and get bugs and things like that but hopefully we'll be able to keep these we've had a predator uh kill some of our chickens and two of our ducks we have two smaller ducks now now they're in a pen and uh till they get a lot bigger we have not figured out exactly what uh, was killing them. So hopefully we have fixed the problem. We've added a taller fence to keep our chickens in the pen. And I'm hoping it's not an aerial predator. That's what I'm hoping. But our deer cam hasn't caught anything. Uh, we've had some scat uh, that we've seen and we've tried to look it up and it could either be from a badger um, or a coyote but there's no breakage in our fence so we don't quite understand that so guys um, another thing we have had a trespasser on our property um, on the far end and they have put up a deer stand and a deer camera we have a property that's connected to us on the back side that uh, that rents out to hunters and I contacted them yesterday and tried to explain to them that if they could contact maybe they've gotten some confusion on where they're hunting and now they're hunting on our property and our neighbor's property there's two deer stands um, on that property and they have orange tags that leads them to the deer stands which leads me to believe that it's not someone that lives in the area because <clears throat> most of the people around here know these woods and they wouldn't need the orange tags to get to their deer stand so i really called them out of uh courtesy to see if they could maybe contact the people that they lease to and explain to them where their boundaries are of their hunting um the laws here in kentucky um really protect landowners and you're really not even allowed to trespass even to get a deer unless you ask the landowner uh, we are protected um, from any kind of liability if they were to get injured because we do have postage um, that states uh, no trespassing that is private property all along our property so after I got in contact with them uh, they said they would have to do some research because they have several properties in the area that they lease out to hunters and they weren't exactly sure the location of the property that I was speaking about. I finally got a call back a few hours after the original phone call <clears throat> and instead of trying to help me they told me just to call local authorities and report them. So guys that's not what I want to do. Um, I was trying to avoid that situation and I was trying to get them to help me so that way they could just be made aware of the hunting so I wouldn't have to get authorities uh, involved. So they're really not, they were not caring <laughs> of their hunters that they leased to to try to at least see if maybe they have mistakenly come on to other people's property to hunt, which was mine and our neighbors. So I was completely shocked that they were not willing to help me or contact the people that they leased to 
to try to avoid the situation of being reported to the wildlife and game. At this point, we keep going up there. It's a little bit further at the end of our property and we cannot see where they would park. So we'll just try to make a few trips here and there up there to see if we can actually catch whoever's there and just let them know that they are on the wrong property. We're actually gonna take a trip up there and see if the deer stand and the camera's still there and if we can actually uh, catch to see if someone's parked up there and is trying to hunt today. Remember this is where I put that salt lick last year. So right here is part of our property and there is someone's deer camera and also someone has placed a deer stand up there. Um, as you can see that they have little orange tags which is leading them to where they needed to go. If this was a local person that lived in this area, they would know this land. We haven't been able to catch the person that's been doing this. Um, so I don't know, I don't know how to handle this. I don't want to go report them. The laws are pretty strict here in Kentucky. Um, so we're going to put a no trespassing sign up uh, right here. And hopefully, um, hopefully they'll get to get that i mean they'll understand that they can't be hunting here on this property this is their deer corn here this is their camera and that's their deer stand up there and we have placed a no trespassing sign here hopefully they are going to be able to see this and know that they can't be on the property the only thing that we can think of is this is people out of the area so guys um if we find out you know or get to speak with anybody we'll bring you along or i'll make an updated video but hopefully this is going to work and they're going to move uh, their stuff off of our property we have come up and a little bit further and there is another deer stand right here and over here are their cameras Two more cameras. This right here is where we've cleared at the top. And as the trees are thinning out and the leaves are falling, that's the Ohio River right there. This would be such a beautiful area to put a house. 